dear and respected all the scholars most welcome for this our new session of art and architectural heritage of india main is session mein hamari aaj ki resource person jo hai aur hamare आर्किटेक्ट यम शांतिनी जी मैं उनका भी यहाँ पर स्वागत करता हूँ और आज का ये सत्र शुरू करने से पहले मैं थोड़ा सा उनके बारे में इंट्रोडक्शन देना चाहूंगा कैन यू हियर माय वॉइस क्लियरली मेरी आवाज ठीक से आ रही है आप सभी को यस सर यस सर यस सर यस सर Uh, with an impeccable track record who can take up a responsible position as a faculty where her educational potential matches the organization's growth and strength and to contribute for the achievements of the organizational goals with betterment of her career prospects so she creates social responsible students in a challenging and encouraging this learning environment uh, she had a great experience of 17 years and uh, in teaching 13 years and uh, as a practice for four year, more, more than 4 years so she was started her work as a assistant architect uh, at a associates at hyderabad and then as a architect uh, uh, in chennai in different uh, uh, firms like the anamika architects subramanyam architects then uh, line of thoughts chennai uh, then she started her work as a assistant professor uh, from school of architecture and interior design and uh, then as a uh, then in rajalakshmi school of architecture and as a associate professor she started her work from 2015 in crescent school of architecture and then in school of environment architecture and design in srm institute of science and technology in chennai uh, her uh, so many research papers published in national and international level research journals uh, she had delivered many lectures guest lectures and uh, uh, is uh, uh, this entire uh, cv or the information uh, when we read any uh, such type of the cv then uh, we get uh, information regarding her great experience actually mai ye kehta hu ki hamesha jo bio data mein jo likha hai usse zyada jab koi baat karta hai tab hame pata chalta hai last year also she delivered one lecture in our this art and architectural heritage of india course it was really excellent so before starting the session humbly request to all the participants please take your pen and notebook for to take the notes and after complete the session please share it with us so i humbly request to shantini ji please start our today session thank you sir thanks a lot for inviting me again for this uh, a wonderful session i'm happy to be a part of your uh, lecture series always and uh, uh, let me start my session now is my screen visible sir yes yes okay uh okay so uh today my uh, topic is going to be on uh, managing historic urban environments where i i have taken a study of madurai and basically i have uh, done my schooling and college at uh, the city of madurai so i wanted to share uh, my knowledge of whatever i have seen from the childhood till now and how madurai have uh, changed with years together so for those people who don't know where madurai is madurai is actually uh, uh, in the south uh, of tamil nadu it is uh, nearly 400 kilometers away from uh, capital city chennai it is located in a hot dry zone and the city exhibits a variety of heritage qualities and undisturbed for centuries so there are lots of jain caves on the mountains there is a temple complex which is in the city center there are lots of palaces within the city there is a non perennial river which is uh, called vaihe river and it is uh, irrigating acres of land with the sophisticated water systems uh, so there are festivals throughout the year and there are lots of intricate craft which is still in practice and which adds value to the region the significant factor of uh, uh, remaining cultural capital for more than 2000 years alone makes it to be very important heritage spot in the map of madurai so uh, you people would have uh, really studied about uh, news which comes with uh, this uh, archaeological department about uh, the excavation which is done in keeladi it is actually there in the madurai district only 
The city also has fostered Tamil literature for uh, thousands of years through lots of sangams. So now coming to the evolution of the city, you can actually see, hope my cursor is visible here. So you can actually see this, uh, uh, this is the river, which is actually dividing the uh, city into north and the south. So you can see in 1757, there was only a fort wall and a small temple. It was, it was dedicated for the Lord Shiva. And there was a small temple which is dedicated with the Lord Shiva. And this is what was actually present in the Sangam period. And slowly it started developing and the major development had, to, had during the Pandian period. So in the Pandian middle period, you have a lots of developments and the fourth ward was built. And you can see a small, small, small uh, 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 developments which is happening near the river bank of Madurai. That is the river of uh, Waihe. Then, excuse me, ma'am, your voice is not very clear somehow. Sorry to interrupt. I am unable to understand. Vinitaji, Vinitaji, very sorry. It is very clear to this side. Uh, Humbly, I want to ask other participants also, is it clear for you or any problem? It is clear, sir. Clear, yes. sir. Thank you. So before before starting any uh, this, uh, you please just put the message in chat box. So uh, very sorry. Uh, please continue. OK, OK. Uh, so uh, you can see a lots of small, small developments which have started in the year 1857 at the bank of the river Vaige. So this is how we actually call up. Uh, we know how a, a city actually develops or a village actually develops only with the uh, water body. It starts developing. Now, in 1970, you can see there is a, a railway line which actually goes. And uh, there are lots of railway lines which actually in trips. And uh, the city has grown more. And this is 1947 and this is 1970. So you can see this, uh, uh, you can actually see uh, the first one is the Sangam period where uh, um, it was only a forest and you had a, a idol of uh, Lord Shiva, a lingam was actually found. And there was Kalapirars who were ruling from 3rd AD to 6th AD. Then you had a Pandian emperor, uh, which is called a Pandian's middle period, which was in 17, uh, 575 to 966. And you had Cholas because... Uh, Cholas and Pandyas are considered as uh, rivals in uh, 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 down south uh, Tamil Nadu. So they were all, uh, alternatively, they were actually uh, taking up the emperorship. Then you had a second Pandyan period. Then sultans entered Madurai. Then you had uh, Madurai, which actually developed in this period, which is actually a Vijayanagara period. That is from 1378 to 1529. Then you had Nayakar's rule. So where Nayakars came into a uh, uh, picture and here also there was a major development which was happening. That is from 1529 to 1739. Then you had Marathas where uh, Marathas also were there in Madurai because Marathas uh, started uh, to come into Tanjur. The same Marathas were actually present in Madurai. Then you had uh, Arkot Nawab in Madurai and then uh, you came into British uh, rule. So this is the evolution of the city. Uh, hope my uh, slide has changed. Uh, this is Sangam age, that is before 3rd century BC. So you can see only the river and uh, the three important mountains. So this is called Tirupurangundram. Now here you have a Kartikeya temple, a very important temple over here. And here it's, this is Nagamalai and this is Anamalai. So these three are considered to be the boundaries of Madurai. So uh, the physical evidence dates back to 3rd century, where you have Jain beds in Anamalai, Nagamalai, as well as Turupramundra. So uh, there are lots of uh, carvings of uh, Mahavira and rocket caves and Jain beds. Then comes the Pandian period, which is still 12th century. So you can see the fort wall is being constructed. You have a temple, a small temple. And then uh, this is called Vittavasal. Vittavasal in the... Uh, since it is the entry of uh, the city and uh, you can actually see the southern bank of the river is started uh, developing. So this is Nayak's period where the fort wall has extended now and uh, uh, this uh, during this Nayak period and the uh, Vijayanagara period only you had uh, the planned city which actually came in. So it was planned according to the Manasara principles. So all the main streets run parallel with the walls of the temple. And all the streets are uh, uh, named with the uh, uh, Tamil month's name. 
so you have a tamil calendar so all the streets are named with the tamil month so again you can see a lots of uh, uh, development happening only at the south of uh, the river vaihai and this is uh, during vijayanagara period and nayak's period till 16th century ad please have a look of this water bodies so there are lots of water bodies which are present here so all these water bodies have gone now so you can see only this water body is present now there are lots of water bodies which has been developed as residential areas in 1866 it became the southern headquarters of uh, tamil nadu and in 1875 railways were introduced to the city linking the northern and southern part of the state so what happened there were lots of people who came down and uh, the city started developing in the southern not only in the southern in the northern part of uh, the river also so slowly we are actually taking care of uh, taking that uh, uh this uh, water bodies have been uh, uh taken by the residential demolished or it is being uh, taken under the residential areas so this is uh, in the colonial period and now you see uh, this is the uh, final present uh, uh, site map of uh, madurai in present situation so this is the vaigai river and you can see how much a uh, city has developed in years together so now it has become uh, the second largest city of uh, tamil nadu and it has a area of 51.82 km square so the most of the ponds are converted into uh, residential uh, areas now with respect to an uh, and conservation architects or uh, architect who has a lots of love and respect towards history and heritage so we can actually divide this uh, preservation this uh, zone into four preservation five preservation zone so one first zone is your uh, the north the four valley streets that is the immediate streets which are coming uh, around the temples and the second one is the river bank area and uh, the third one is where you have a lots of uh, uh, tanks and then uh, you have lots of cultural uh, activity zones i told you there are lots of festivals which are happening even now so there are lots of areas here where the cultural activities happen and you have a great uh, gandhi museum here in the zone 3 and you have fourth zone which has only the irrigation channels of the city and the fifth zone is actually taken care as uh, the uh, mountainous areas of the madurai that i told you that uh, date back to 3rd century so those uh, uh, mountains which can be considered as the preservation zones this is how uh, we started up uh, 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 to preserve uh, madurai and we gave from our college we gave uh, uh, lots of uh, uh inputs to the government so this i have tried to chart out uh, the important heritage elements inside the corporation limit so you can see this is gandhi museum and uh, this is pudu mandapam this is the meenakshi temple and uh, you have the fort wall remains over here in this area and this is puttu topu which is very important for the uh, cultural activities happening there and uh, this is the uh, very important uh, tirumalai nayakar palace uh, uh, where uh, uh, you, probably you people would have seen uh, uh, the movie uh, bombay where uh, the uh, manisha koirala song was actually taken here so uh, these are very very important uh, heritage zones elements of madurai which is actually scattered across the city now with respect to madurai without going into meenakshi temple we cannot actually uh, come across other heritage zones of madurai so uh, madurai as you as i told you earlier it is 2600 years old with sri meenakshi shuntreshwara temple in the center and uh, the basic grid of the city is very clearly apparent it is defined by the set of concentric circles almost uh, around uh, and the axis of orientation lies east west so the city which has been compared to european scholars to athens and was being called by them as athens of east so this is the picture which is actually the older picture of uh, uh, this uh, madurai temple and you can actually see uh, the temple is here then the streets are being developed and this is a schematic representation of a temple city uh, not only madurai even srirangam uh, of that kind and tiruvannamalai Th- 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 all dravidian architectural styles have developed with this center on so the city was laid up in the shape of square with a series of concentric streets culminating from the temple 
these squires continue to retain the traditional names like uh, Adi, uh, Chittirai, Avni, Mula streets, Masi streets, corresponding to the names of the Tamil ones. Ancient Tamil classics mention that the temple was the center of the city and the streets happening to be radiating out like lotus and its petals. The temple prakaram, outer uh, present of the temple and the streets accommodate an elaborate festival calendar, as I told you, which is so dramatic and there are lots of positions which is happening. There are lots of circumlatory uh, 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 streets which are there and the shrines are there at varying distances from the center. The vehicles used in the processions are also progressive and they are also kept in this uh, streets only. The complex is around 45 acres, that is, uh, and the temple is a massive structure which dates back to 2,500 years. So this is the overall picture of how the city and the uh, temple looks like and uh, uh, bird's eye view. Uh, the temple is a geographic and ritual center of the ancient city of Madurai. And uh, uh, the, there are very few temples which have four gopurams facing four directions. And we have four gopurams over here. And uh, there is one other entrance in the east. And there are five entrances. And um, Meenakshi temple is a prime example of Dravidian architectural style. And there are lots of characteristics of uh, Dravidian architecture, which often includes covered porches and then uh, tall entry gate towers, that is Gopuram. And you have water tanks or reservoirs for ritual uh, uh, bathing. And then uh, you have in, um, uh, uh, many pillared halls. So all these are pillared halls. And this is the uh, Portamari Kulam, that is the ritual uh, pond. Uh, so it is uh, one of the largest of its kind in India and doubt, undoubtedly one of the oldest also. So this is the detailed plan of uh, uh, the temple, which was actually done during Nayak's period, that is uh, during 1600 AD. So you can see this is uh, uh, Sundareshwar Shrine. People call it Meenakshi Temple, but uh, Meenakshi uh, Shrine has become an important uh, uh, shrine and people call Meenakshi Temple. But uh, this all happened only during Vijayanagara period. Before that, it was only this shrine that is only the Lingam was present and all these structures has been done during Vijayanagara and Nayak's period. So uh, almost whatever was there in the Sangam period has been torn down. And uh, Malika Kafur's uh, uh, period, it was uh, totally demolished and whatever you see is... Uh, uh, being reconstructed by Nayaks and uh, Vijayanagaras. So this is the uh, shrine of uh, Shiva. This is the shrine of uh, Meenakshi. And then uh, you have this as Pudu Mandabam. And uh, this is this Portamare Kulam. And uh, you have lots of uh, uh, this uh, four uh, Gobrams, north, south, east, and west. The south Gobram is the tallest. And you have an other entrance in the east, which directly leads to uh, Meenakshi Shrine. So this is the uh, uh, important entrance which is used even till now. So once it became Meenakshi Temple, uh, the importance was given to Meenakshi. Then from then onwards, this particular entrance was built and this became more important. So uh, uh, so you can see this uh, plan, you can see the axis of the north and south and east-west Gobram intersect at the place where the shrine of the principal deity Shiva is located. So this is the intersection and which is I am talking about. And uh, there are lots of pillared mandabams. Now you can see this is one pillared mandabam. This is the other thousand pillared mandabam, the famous thousand pillared mandabam. This is one other pillared mandabam which is there. And you can see there are lots of pillars uh, which are around the uh, circumlatory parts. So even uh, around the, the shrine of Meenakshi and around the shrine of Shiva. So you can see the uh, different uh, pictures of uh, how it is actually there. Now, since because it became the earliest uh, temple complexes and uh, uh, it was actually larger work was done in uh, Nayak's dynasty, that is 16th and 17th century. So there were lots of redesigned surrounding uh, streets according to the secret tradition of Vastu Sastra. So, um, the Pandya started constructing the Meenakshi temple in lay, uh, late, uh, I mean, early 13th century. But it actually, the the whole picture which I'm talking to you, this, this whole picture of this uh, Meenakshi temple was completed only during 16th and 17th century during the Nights. 
and as i told you uh, the southern tower is the tallest it was built by uh, uh, sevadi chettiar and uh, 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 this north tower was built by naiks and uh, uh, but it was left unfinished though the temple was commissioned with the east tower and the uh, as the main entrance the east tower is 161 feet and the south tower is 160 feet west tower is 163 feet and north tower is 160 feet and all these towers are nine stories and you can find msl a uh, plus 400 feet stone fixed at the top of the south tower by gts of india so when it comes to architecture of pandyas pandyas are the one who created and uh, who gets the credit for this uh, lofty gateway that is this gopurams gopuram means gopuram in tamil gopuram means go is uh, the king or the cow and puram is the way the pathway the entrance way so gopuram is uh, this structure is actually a two fold subject which is a monotonous drabness of the enclosure at the same time making temple visually attractive the evolution of the form of gopuram was rectangular base so this is the rectangular base and there is a barrel vault derived from the buddhist chaityas so this was actually a barrel vault now you have a lots of steps Uh, which is actually uh, going across this tower and you can reach till this this uh, area so the la the first two the lowest two stories of the gopurams are vertical and as you see the solid stone masonry and providing a lighter weight structure for the gopurams to be built so this gopuram was actually built with bricks and uh, mortar so you can see uh, uh, the difference between what other gopurams and what the southern gopuram of uh, minakshi temple is it is concave in shape which gives a dynamism to the shape of the gopuram this south gopuram is which is concave sides look so impressive and you can see a uh, lots and lots of pillars with uh, intricate details of uh, sculptures there are nearly 33000 sculptures within the temple complex alone and which is a large amount by itself and the temple shows the capacity of art and aesthetic approach so uh, from the gopuram the vimana differs the vimana is uh, the topmost uh, uh, point where the shrine is being kept the main idol is being kept so now you can actually see the vimana is seen here this is shiva's vimana and this vimana is uh, seen here is uh, um, uh meenakshi's vimana this is where the uh, idols are being kept now uh, please give an important look to this uh, uh, yali uh, and then the lots of sculptures now the research is going on with respect to temple complex and the, the pillars of uh, uh, madurai where they say this all this uh, um, uh, sculptures are made with respect to fibonacci series and made with respect to uh, a golden ratio and all these uh, pillars are actually creating a lots of acoustical effects inside the temple also so there are researchers which are going on so you can see this compound wall and you can see how the uh, comp this uh, gopuram is actually built and uh, uh, these are the stucco works which are actually seen in the gopurams and these are the guardian deities which is actually there on the uh, uh walter proofs so so this is about uh, a detailed explanation of meenakshi temple and when it comes to meenakshi temple i hope everybody who visits madurai will not leave meenakshi temple they have an uh, exact point where they have to go they know uh, what uh, what are the uh, things they have to see but other than meenakshi temple there are lots of heritage values uh, uh, which are actually present uh, uh in uh, those uh, uh four valley streets only that is uh, i'm talking about only the temple complexes uh, only the uh, southern part of the river bank and only the city this uh, temple precincts so i wanted to actually discuss on what are the other core city issues how this urbanization has become an uh, threat or how we have to handle this urbanization when it comes to a historic city like madurai or a heritage city like madurai so what are the core city issues there is a lots of centralized activity which leads to high density obviously you people would have seen with the evolution of the 
uh, plan of uh, city of madurai so there are lots of things which are happening around uh, this particular temple complex there are traffic congestions and pedestrian vehicle conflict which occur almost everywhere because there are lots of market areas here and there are lots of loading and unloading happening over here increase in the vehicle inflow leads to insufficient parking commercial hubs generate complementary activities commercialization has led to the lack of green spaces commercialization has led to the formation of uh, incoherent facades so i'm i'm as an architect i'm literally worried about these kinds of facades which is there in a historic city which is there in a heritage city there are lots of importance which has to be given to the facade when it comes to a uh, development which is happening near this kind of temple city or this kind of uh, um, important uh, uh, heritage points this is totally out of way construction and out of way facade which is not being uh, translated with the heritage language so what are the other core cities heritage buildings are surrounded by commercial clusters temple's floor level has been lowered due to the repeated overlaying of roads so this happens i hope this happens in every city so this road is not being uh, taken care of there is an increase in the road level always and uh, uh, the the temple has been lowered because of this and massive hoardings uh, which is virtually polluting the city and the pressure in the infrastructure this uh, excess garbage generation overloading of sewage insufficient water supply insufficient electricity and lack of proper signages inhabitants and visitors were taken to stake now when we are talking about issues we have to talk about potentials also so what are the potentials meenakshi temple an everlasting treasure trove itself is a potential so what we did first was we suggested from our college to the government of uh, 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 madurai and uh, the uh, people corporation people at madurai we asked them to take the assets uh, which is scattered over the city with an important note the city is composed with temple tanks festivals rituals we made them understand all those things and it is a globally familiar heritage town everybody knows if it is madurai meenakshi temple everybody knows that it's well connected by air rail and roads forthcoming it sector would pump in more for funds and generate employment so what were the immediate action plans which were taken establishment of madurai arts commission urban arts commission was established and uh, uh, this clearance of the buildings around the heritage sites were given there were lots of uh, uh, public awareness programs which were done at that period of time that is uh, after 2005 to 2010 it was in peaks and uh, use of appropriate signages were done in the at least in the temple area and provision of uh, efficient and well networked the public transport systems were made decentralization of the core central city activities happened uh, i hope uh, in 2007 uh, there were two main markets which were taken out from the uh, city core and it is being placed in the northern side of the river and uh, immediate action plans uh, the first action plan which was taken was to encourage pedestrians bicycles and non polluting vehicles there are battery cars which are being transported now and uh, totally two wheelers and four wheelers on all the polluting vehicles are being stopped from this uh, uh, four valley streets and fixed standard road level has been given at the uh, uh, temple complex area uh, and uh, provide provision of storm water and drains has been taken care of these three uh, action plans has not been taken care till now we are fighting with that and we are trying to make them understand the importance of unified facade controls for the heritage core uh, create a pilgrim facility hubs at the outskirts of the city and provide incentives to people adhering to the heritage guidelines all uh, this too especially this uniform facade controls is being actually done in jaipur very nicely and um, in, in jaisalmer for that matter and in pondicherry also pondicherry is intact has actually given lots of incentives for the people who are adhering to the heritage guidelines so we have suggested the same to tamil nadu government also so uh, this is uh, uh, a uh, map which shows identified heritage spots so uh, this is uh, tirumalai nayak's palace uh, as i told you this uh, the uh, movie bombay song uh, 
was actually shot here. This is Tirumalai Nayak's palace, and uh, this is Pattu tomb. So you can see this 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 uh, huge um, uh, monumental pillars. So tomb is uh, pillars in Tamil. Pattu is ten. So this is ten pillars which is standing directly. Uh, nearby uh, each other, and I will be talking about in detail in the later slides. And three is uh, this uh, uh, Vilakuthun area, and uh, this uh, four is police station, and uh, five is uh, Amman Thermuti, that is uh, the chariot which is actually kept. Uh, so you can see the chariot uh, which is actually kept uh, uh, in these areas. And uh, you have a press which was old press, and the Vitavasal, that is the remains of the fort wall. And you have Raya Gopuram. This is the remains of the uh, unbuilt structure of a Gopuram. And uh, you have Pudu Mandabam. Pudu Mandabam is also a pillared Mandabam, which is actually used as a shopping area now. And you have Gandhi Nyanayavam, Gandhi Museum, remains of the fort wall. And uh, this is the important uh, temple tank, uh, Mariamman temple tank. So we had uh, idea of proposing a heritage walk. And uh, we are trying to achieve that also. So uh, let me start from this Vasanta Mandabam. Vasanta Mandabam is nothing but Pudu Mandabam. Pudu Mandabam now houses shops that have generally led to the decay of the Mandabam. You can see this is actually the Pudu Mandabam and its pillars, which is actually not seen at all because of this shops which is actually placed over there. The shopkeepers, with sheer knowledge, without knowing the importance of this mandabam and the heritage of this uh, 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 the pillars, they have actually used all their uh, uh, items. Like uh, tailors are actually taking care of all these things. The clothes are being hung in the uh, columns and the pillars, and they are this. All these visual beauties are being uh, damaged. Uh, the priceless structures are being damaged. So this is the Vasanta Mandabam or the Pudu Mandabam, and this is the issues of concern. And this is Raya Gopuram. So you can see this uh, this Raya Gopuram. Raya Gopuram is nothing but you can see this transformer also. Please have a look of all those things. So this is Raya Gopuram is nothing but um, uh, yeah, other bigger. Uh, Eastern Gopuram was started, as I told you. The Southern Gopuram is the highest Gopuram now. But in the eastern side, they wanted a highest Gopuram, so they started with this uh, uh, Raya Gopuram, and uh, it stopped in between. And uh, we don't know the reason. And uh, see how this is being maintained. There are lots of uh, trees which are actually growing on, and uh, see this uh, cloths are being hung over there. So this whole street. Has become a uh, shopping area. See how they have actually treated this uh, columns of the Raya Gopuram. So this is how it is actually looking now. So the terrace of this monument has a redundant open space for several years. So this Raya Gopuram has this terrace. This terrace has a lots of open space which can be housed uh, or which can be actually thought of as a. Uh, 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 Area where I can go and I can uh, see the aerial uh, picture of Madurai. So this is what actually we have thought about uh, a 20 square feet of open space and only elevated plain in the core city. So you can see this is the older picture of the Raya Gopuram, and this is the existing picture of the Raya Gopuram. So there is a uh, there is a. Uh, uh, Transformer here. We have uh, from the college. We have asked them from this uh, arts commission. We have told them to remove all those things, and that has been removed now. And uh, there is a possibility of regenerating the redundant open space into a place uh, with interesting activities like parrot astrology, traditional Kuri Museum, all those things. So this is one important junction or a landmark uh, of Madurai. Which is actually called as Vilaku Thun. Vilaku is lamp and Thun is uh, pillar. So this particular, what is so uh, beautiful over here, this is this piece of art. This was an Italian uh, lamp uh, uh, which was actually erected during the uh, pre-colonial period, and uh, without even knowing the importance, they have actually built a roundabout over here, and they have a, a, a bada. Uh, um, uh, uh, this uh, five lamp post over here, and there was a traffic signal also. 
with lots of uh, uh, fights we have removed the traffic signal and we have tried to remove this uh, lamp post also so this importance of this uh, is not even known to the younger generation of madurai who are living there so further there is a modern high mast which is actually installed right next to it and there is no proper display of information on the historical significance and hence many of the new generation of madurai residents are also unaware of this uh, fact uh, excepting that they know this as a uh, traffic island that's all so this is the pattutum which i was talking about when i was talking about the heritage walk map so you can see how the pattutum is actually treated so once you stand here you won't know there is a pattutum because there are lots of uh, 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 this what is this uh, posters uh, this political posters and there are lots of uh, small 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 uh, shops which have come into that area and uh, people use that uh, uh, pattutum uh, as uh, <coughs> the uh, 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 this uh, backdrop of their uh, shopping areas and uh, uh, there are lots of electrical cabling which is actually provided in this region and locals of eb and lamp post are nearly spoiling the beauty of this particular region uh, this is this is all is happening because uh, uh, they don't know the importance of this place there is a sheer negligence of this uh, and uh, this is why it is being entangled and being uh, there is a haphazard growth only if we tell them we educate them probably they will understand the importance of this area so this is very beautifully a uh, 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 a view of this pattutum but uh, history says that it is the remains of uh, nayak's mahal and uh, they were they used to tie uh, elephants in this uh, pattutum area and this is uh, uh, the great architectural beauty thirumalai nayakar mahal and uh, uh, this is the interface between asi and it has been declared as an uh, asi site now and its surrounding is always unimpressive and any visitor to this palace so you can see how the surroundings of this uh, particular area of uh, uh, this uh, tirumalai nayakar mahal was this is how it was in 19 in 98 and 2000 starting and only in 2005 we actually got parking for this particular uh, uh, tirumalai nayakar mahal though it was it was an asi site the entire interiors of the mahal which has several major cracks and plenty of repair work has been carried out in 2010 and uh, this has uh, uh, to be regenerated and there is a light and uh, sound show even which is happening now which is actually keeping this uh, mahal alive so um, this this is that uh, uh, huge uh, you can see the similarity between uh, uh, this uh, uh, pillar and the pattutum which i showed uh, in the previous slide so uh, we have actually proposed a heritage walk with uh, key proposals has been submitted and uh, uh, i could actually say uh, that uh, uh, could i get to madura i should esteem myself uh, happy as that place and its neighborhood affords more beauties and nature and art uh, than perhaps any other place in india so this is being being told by francis ward as uh, we know we we are not respecting our culture we are not respecting our heritage we are not respecting our history but people from the west people from uh, other places have come studied here uh, they have actually researched on all these things and they are giving us a uh, lots of information which uh, in fact uh, we ourselves are unknown of so this is about uh, my uh, journey with uh, important places at madurai thank you thank you thanks a lot can you please uh, uh, say your some personal experiences when you started your work regarding this uh, uh, encroachment and these all these things when uh, you requested the people or the uh, uh, dealing with the government and the bureaucrats regarding this uh, uh, encroachments then please share your experiences about it yes sir it was really very difficult to make uh, people understand actually it was very easy to make the public understand but it was very really, very difficult to make uh, uh, 
the government understand about this. Uh, so in Madurai, we have Tiaharajo College of Engineering. I am an alumni of Tiaharajo College of Engineering Architecture Department. So uh, Tiaharajo College of Engineering, along with the students of uh, students and alumni of Tiaharajo College of Engineering, they actually uh, uh, took uh, 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 in charge of all those things. And uh, as I told you, Advan. Uh, uh, Arts Commission was formed and it was being headed by our own professors and our own seniors and uh, the students of architecture. So they took uh, lots of initiatives. We started with uh, uh, concerns. We started with uh, uh, documenting all these uh, areas with proofs. And then we went and met a collector of Madurai. And then we went and met uh, uh, the commission. We asked them to make a commission so that we can um, make this all these things happening uh, to understand to the government and then uh, uh, it slowly changed it slowly changed it took uh, uh, really years together probably it started in uh, the year 2004 and then uh, it ended up in 2008 with explaining uh, um, uh, the importance of this madurai and then uh, uh, and then uh, uh, we we made ourselves understand and then we told them the importance of uh, uh, Madurai's heritage, history, all those things. And uh, 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 it is yeah, it is very very uh, difficult to convince them. And uh, uh, to Indian context, I would say uh, because of this um, uh, urbanization, we are losing lots of heritage. So. We cannot say that, OK, all these are heritage structures. So, so don't do any urbanization or uh, uh, none of the uh, uh, growth has to happen in the city center. We cannot say that. We have to actually understand the, the city's importance. And together, we have to actually bring out the uh, 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 city's growth also. So that is where I hope the architects, the engineers, and the conservations play a ma major role. Yes, thank you. And uh, with this your presentation, uh, everyone uh, could get understand that it's not change of one night only. Both are logo ke acha lagta hai ki ek raat mein sab kuch badal jayega. Hum kuch shuru karenge aur kuch hi din mein sab kuch pura badal leke aayega. It's not possible. Jaise apni bataya 2004 mein apni shuru kiya aur 2008 mein. Government to Samjane me or politics bureaucrat Jehe Unko Samjane me Thoda Sayo Te. But when we when we talk about the uh, society, then what happened actually uh, after long years uh, this year, uh, you and your team, entire team, Jolo Prayas Karte, so I select the Haki Lok Jehe heritage ko respect ke bajai. आस्था के नजरों से देखते हैं मगर वो आस्था इस तरह की होती है जैसे हम अपनी मां को घर में भी गुस्सा कर सकते हैं सो लाइक दैट वो समझते हैं कि हेरिटेज हमारा है हम कुछ भी कर सकते हैं तो कुछ भी कर सकते हैं इसमें उसके उसका ध्यान रखना उसका ख्याल रखना नहीं होता है वो यूज करना जो है जैसे कई बार वाटर बॉडीज को हम देखते हैं टेंपल वॉल्स को देखते हैं सो ब्यूटीफुल टेंपल वॉल्स दे जस्ट हैंगिंग देयर क्लॉथ देयर आफ्टर वॉशिंग सो ऐसा लगता है कि ये ये जो हमारे सभी के दिमाग में है तो उसके लिए इंडिविजुअली जो भी यहाँ पर लोग ऐसा चाहते हैं कि हमारे यहाँ का कोई हेरिटेज स्ट्रक्चर ऐसा है कुछ मॉन्यूमेंट्स है उसको हमें कुछ अच्छा लोगों के सामने प्रेजेंट करना है तो आपको क्या करना होगा उसका गाइडलाइन ये सेशन है सो दिस प्रेजेंटेशन विल बिकम अ गाइडलाइन फॉर ऑल ऑफ अस so humbly thankful and uh, humbly request to other participants also if you have any questions then please ask agar kisi ko kuch sawal puchna hai to aap puch sakte hai otherwise i have ready my own questions but uh, if, uh, uh, what is the reason that the height of the gopuram is higher than the temple tara shankar panda ji uh, sir as uh, we discussed um... Uh, in our uh, this uh, Dravidian uh, architectures, uh, temple architecture by Shivasankar sir, uh, it was it was not uh, considered as the gopuram of the temple. It was considered as the gateway to the temple complex. So slowly it started changing. So first uh, Chola in Chola period, the vimana was given more importance, and uh, 
uh, the the entrance of the uh, gopuram the entrance uh, of this temple complex was very kept very small so that is how it is there in bragadeshwara temple that is how it is there in gangai konda cholapuram temple but slowly it started changing and they gave started importance with respect to this uh, uh, gopurams when it comes to pandya's period so uh, i don't think there is any um, reason behind it it was just a cultural change or uh, the regions change or the uh, architecture change with happened with respect to the uh, kings uh, to my knowledge yes thank you thank you any other questions kisi ko kuch puchna hai oh just a minute very sorry maine session ke isme yes now you can unmute yourself and you can ask and you can ask Yes, Anita. Yes, Anita. You want to? As I know, uh, there are some elephants also owned by the temple. आपकी आवाज नहीं आ रही है. आपकी आवाज नहीं आ रही है. Oh, okay. Then maybe some network problem. No problem. No, we can't hear you. Very sorry. Yeah, very sorry. Rashmi, Rashmi has raised her hand. Her hand. गुड थिंग्स somehow i believe you know like uh, i did a session in my kids school uh, i actually i had to had a lot of um, effort to put into the uh, principal's mind ki we need to teach uh, children about our culture and heritage and preservation so i managed a lecture with them good good uh, very good small presentation i think 3 years back mm -hmm. um, such kind of things you know we need to promote as an educational level with the kids yes you know? it has For to start from the school itself very true very true and i'm with the coming generation and yes. sometimes i feel um, uh, no offense to any profession or something our government officials who comes from with such a heavy uh, background of education like you know they clear their upsc they clear their state exams and when they come on to their position they don't understand even after reading so much of history and studies sometimes they don't understand the you know the value of the city mm -hmm. like uh, i personally my parents belong from varanasi now with the effort we have seen how the city has actually changed mm -hmm. you know but then ah. still there are so many things you know um like uh, during a river valleys uh, uh, session there was one uh, ma'am who presented she was doing with that japanese uh, thing they had reviving the city of banaras with architecture but the problem happening like i think we discussed this when we did the world heritage uh, uh, week also like there are a lot of houses which are beautiful in itself but to maintain hmm again gets a problem when you said about the urbanization yes. how do one get to do such things you know with uh, you know sometimes it gets really difficult uh it's very true actually we have to actually give them suggestions i hope uh, uh, instead of taking uh, problems to the government uh, there has to be learned people uh, or uh, kind of uh, like minded people who have to come together and they have to actually take up uh, uh uh take up a solution to that particular point if we are taking the solution probably they will understand or probably they will at least consider give us a chance to listen to them if we are just going and telling them only the problems i hope uh, with the lots of issues which are going on today it's uh, every day's affairs i don't think uh, uh uh the even the government officials will have time to listen to us uh, and to listen to all this history heritage etc and all i hope as you told now uh, central government has taken lots of initiatives with respect to uh, heritage and culture and now it has slowly started changing 
but uh, it is it is uh, as sir told it is it cannot uh, we cannot see the uh, fruit in the next day we have to actually wait we actually had to wait for 8 years continuously to see just to take that uh, uh, the uh, heavy lamp post which is actually near that uh, italian small lamp post that itself uh, took 8 years for us with lots of difficulties only it has happened and now they have realized like even taj mahal for that matter uh, they gave a mud pack uh, uh, preservation uh, uh, and they stopped in between i hope for 2 years there was a mud pack preservation which was happening with taj mahal and they uh, stopped the uh, 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 general public entering into taj mahal now only uh, we have only the horses and the battery cars which is actually going near taj mahal it is because of the pollution so this this all these things actually i hope it takes a lots of time for us to realize that uh, this is important we have to preserve it and as uh, architects and as conservation people as historic people uh, uh, those people who are learned in that subject can actually bring out with suggestions instead of telling them not to use that we can actually make that we have actually given a suggestion of pudu mandapam to be used as a cultural uh, Uh, hub like we can have lots of dramas lots of uh, uh, dance dramas or uh, 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 songs which can be conducted over there any kind of uh, meetings can happen over there so that uh, the shops can be taken from there but from the shopkeepers point of view they are actually telling we have been here for years together if you are asking us to relocate where will we relocate if we are relocating them to the northern side of the river who will come and purchase from them it is only the crowd which comes to meenakshi amman temple so uh, we have to relocate them in such a way that even people who come to meenakshi amman temple will have this view of this uh, 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 small scale hawkers which uh, they, they, uh, who they are there for past uh, um, uh, probably for for the past 50 or 60 years then only they will agree to move other way even if government says i don't think they will agree to move it will become again a conflict and they will actually put a petition in the high court and it will go on so we have to actually uh, suggest some intelligent uh, uh, suggestions has to be given from our side so that government will uh, try to take initiatives that is what i have learned from my uh, uh, experience of this kind of uh, uh, activities that is what is happening uh, everywhere i hope so yes thank you uh, just note one point from here that Uh, when the uh, crowd or when their their uh, uh, daily bread and butter is connected with that crowd then they are not ready to no. uh, uh, left that place so jab logon ki roji roti unka jo bhi bread and butter jo us crowd par depend hai wo log wahan se hatne ke liye taiyar nahi hote ये सिर्फ हेरिटेज स्ट्रक्चर्स के साथ में आप अपने शहर के बस स्टैंड रेलवे स्टेशन पर भी देख सकते हैं तो उन्होंने जो बताया है शांति जी ने जो बताया है कि हमें कुछ ऐसे अरेंजमेंट्स करने होंगे क्योंकि हम उनकी रोजी रोटी नहीं छीन सकते वी नीड टू सजेस्ट और वी नीड टू डू सम सच टाइप ऑफ द अरेजमेंट की उनकी रोजी रोटी भी उससे ना छीन सके और वो जो हेरिटेज जो भी मोनूमेंट है या जो भी बस स्टॉप रेलवे स्टेशन है उसके लिए भी सभी को कन्वीनियंसी हो तो ये बात हमको याद रखना है उसको सोचे बगैर क्राउड हटाने की जब बात होती है तो उस समय जो है या तो संघर्ष होता है या तो फिर कोर्ट केसेस होते हैं तो ये बात बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है इसको याद रखना है एंड वी नीड टू फॉलो दिस बात देन ओनली इसके लिए एक छोटा सा एग्जाम्पल मैं अपना एक्सपीरियंस शेयर करना चाहूंगा इन महाराष्ट्र इन लातूर डिस्ट्रिक्ट देर इज अ प्लेस रामलिंग बुधगढ़ it is in nilanga taluka and uh, really excellent uh, small village but there are so beautiful temples are there in a small village which have only the 1000 uh, or 1500 uh, uh, population but uh, uh, four four chaluka period temples are there and uh, uh, in uh, everywhere in the village scattered are beautiful sculptures so wahan par गवर्नमेंट के साथ और लोगों के साथ प्रॉपरली इंटरेक्शन करने के बाद लोगों ने खुद होकर के माना कि ये हमारी जिम्मेदारी है दिस इज आवर रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी टू प्रोटेक्ट आवर हेरिटेज 
and government also support the people you are you are the authority you take the decision we will stand with you so when such type of the stand taken by the government and when they declare in front of the village this gram sabha then people un logo ne khud baith kar ke uske bare mein plan banaya heritage experts ko unhone invite kiya bulaya i was there at that time और लोगों ने वो सारे बिखरे हुए गांव में पड़े हुए बहुत सुंदर शिल्प जो कई लाखों करोड़ों रुपए में अगर कहीं चोरी हो जाते इंटरनेशनल मार्केट में चले जाते लोगों ने ही उसके लिए प्रॉपर प्रोटेक्शन और ये बना के उसको जो अच्छे से वहां पे अभी सेव किया है कभी मौका मिलता है महाराष्ट्र में कभी आते हैं तो एक छोटा सा विलेज जैसे लकुंडी गदक डिस्ट्रिक्ट में विजिट करते है वैसे इसी तरह से एक छोटा रामलिंग बुद्धगढ़ गाँव है सो मैं ये एग्जाम्पल इसलिए दे रहा हूँ कि जब लोगों को आप कहते हैं यू आर द अथोरिटी एंड ओनली यू आर यू आर देयर हु कैन प्रोटेक्ट दिस योर ओन हेरिटेज तो लोग भी उस समय समझ सकते हैं बट वी नीड अ प्रॉपर इंटरेक्शन सिर्फ फोर्स करके सिर्फ जो है उनको डरा के धमका के नहीं हो सकता है सो so, ये बातें जो है ये प्यार से ही होनी चाहिए प्रॉपर इंटरेक्शन होनी चाहिए और गवर्नमेंट का स्टैंड इस तरह से होना चाहिए वी आर देयर विथ यू You can take the decision. नहीं तो हम कहेंगे तुमको मानना पड़ेगा तो लोग भी हमारे खिलाफ हो जाते so, ये बात समझ लीजिए उन्होंने बहुत अच्छे से बताया है so, yes, Bindu you want to say something? Namaste sir. Uh, namaste, uh, Shantini ma'am. Very beautifully uh, told. As sir said, even I also agree with that. Actually, it should be done in our culture is also about the hawker sitting there. I think yes, so. Yes, we should exactly. take their uh, emotions in, into it. But a very beautiful example is what happened in uh, Varanasi, definitely, and how it has taken a different shape because of it. Uh, even in uh, even in Hampi, I think the same thing has happened where many of the mantapas were uh, vacated because it was taken over as houses later on. But um, I think you know it's uh, it mutually if they can get. properties for doing a metro line i mean i think this should also be considered in that same pace and be done uh, you know like how they you know it's a beaut- it's a very nice uh, concept to have it as a cultural uh, living space rather yeah. than using it only as a so monuments actually can be protected only when it is used you know it should be a continuous in use only then it is always protected i think that's my opinion thank you so much beautiful session thank you thank you thank you bindu thank you uh one thing i i uh, have found with uh, pondicherry intact was uh, pondicherry intact have taken the initiative of protecting their facades so they have actually given a lots of incentives and uh, they have tried to keep the facade similar uh be the arches of uh, the french uh, french quarter or be the arches of the tamil quarter uh, uh the grill patterns of the facade the balconies of the facade the color the chrome color of that particular area has been taken care and all the facade are uh, looking similar if you enter the house probably it differs if you enter the hotel probably it differs but at least the facade are kept similar and uh, uh it it is very uh, disheartening to see a lots of uh, glass buildings this acp buildings which are coming very near to temple complexes which is very near to uh, heritage buildings uh, the just opposite to sri rangam uh, main temple tower you can see a hotel which is actually uh, in red and blue color glass block so all those things i hope uh, as normal public and uh, this uh, this uh, uh, development authorities has to take a strict action on that like how bindu said if we are ready to develop our city with respect to metro and we we are uh, 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 taking uh, uh, areas from them then we can actually bring at least with respect to facade we can bring certain norms there in uh, madurai uh, we have a norm of not going more than the height of the uh, um, temple tower that is a south temple tower in the temple premises in that particular uh, uh, region that is around 5 kilometers of that radius in the northern part of uh, madurai you can actually build more than uh, uh, that height but at least in southern part of madurai they have that restriction with respect to heritage uh, this thing i hope uh, uh, now in tamil nadu in that uh, combined development rules we have also brought in uh, 
uh, heritage rules also and we have brought in lots of uh, small small uh, initiatives uh, which will help uh, heritage and history uh, historic urban cities to grow yes thank you thank you thanks a lot once again and uh, i hope uh, you all enjoyed this session but please take uh, the point seriously and note it and uh, uh, when you will start your own work in your heritage sites jahan aap rehte hain wahan ke sites ke liye uh, please uh, uh, take one assignment for you uh, if you are ready uh, jahan aap rehte hain wahan ke local ka koi bhi ek heritage site chun lijiye वहां पर इस तरह से क्या प्रॉब्लम्स है और हम उसे किस तरह से डील करना चाहिए उसके बारे में लिखिए हम कुछ इंटरेक्शन करेंगे देन यू कैन पुट इट इन फ्रंट ऑफ द सोसाइटी एंड इन इन फ्रंट ऑफ गवर्नमेंट आल्सो विथ द सजेशंस नॉट ओनली नोटिंग द प्रॉब्लम्स ओके सो हम्बली थैंक यू शांति में जी बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया और उम्मीद करते हैं कि इस तरह से हम मिलते रहेंगे आपके जो भी और विषय है तो ऐसा लगता है कॉलेजी that also in our project yes yes you yes, can yes, you can okay actually they have beautiful fresco uh, which in indian we can say that uh, alagila that is so beautiful uh, paintings are there so i just want to <laughs> take these all okay. thank you So thank you once again. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Shantini ji, and thank thanks you, a lot. To thanks, all. thanks for the opportunity, and thank you all uh, for the supporting. Just a minute. Humble request to all. Please on your video so that we can take a group photograph, a screenshot. Please on your video for one minute. Humble request to all. Please on your video for one minute only. So we can request take. Rupya, one minute. Ki liye sirf apna video on kare. मुंडीदीपा मंडल जी तुषार चतुर्वेदी जी पद्मप्रिया जी सभी लोग जो भी है दिव्या सैनी जी मेरु तिवारी जी रश्मि अयगिरी मैडम श्वेता सिंह जी गौरी जी प्लीज ऑन योर वीडियो फॉर वन मिनट ओके जिनको पॉसिबल नहीं है लेट इट बी बट पॉसिबल है वो लोग तो कृपया शुरू करें सो जस्ट अ मिनट आई नो नो प्रॉब्लम ओके सो जस्ट अ मिनट ओके वी नीड यूर स्माइल ऑल्सो ऑन योर फेस अगर आप लोग इस सेशन से खुश है तो आपकी हंसी भी चाहिए क्योंकि बहुत बार ऐसा होता है क्यों ऐसा घुट घुट के जीना है थोड़ा खुशी से और हंस के जीना है ना सो थैंक यू वंस अगेन थैंक्स अलॉट टू ऑल एंड विल मीट अगेन थैंक यू शांति थैंक यू सर थैंक यू थैंक्स अलॉट